Critic episodes were filmed years ago. You got it, Bucko. They kept everything the same to preserve its history. But look at all the reviews that they did. There's Shrek. There's Schindler's List Saves Christmas. And that one. But this, this is what I really wanted to show you. Is that the DVD from the Balto Review, Aunt Despair? Yep. And I was there when it was shot. Gasp! You mean it's a true story? Based. It's based on a true story. Wow! Would you mind telling me the tale, Aunt Despair? Up uh, after I have a sip of my storytelling sauce. Oh, the same sauce that makes you good at slow-mo leapfrog with men? Our story begins on the Nostalgia Critic sitting down at the desk he normally does. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Let's talk about a little film called Balto. Despite it doing poorly with both critics and box office, the film eventually found success on home video, leading to a ton of VHS and DVD sales. So I guess it got the reputation of the not really little film that not really could, but turned into profit eventually, so table scrap sequels for all! Based on a true story, it covers a dog sled that has to race against time to get medicine to a town full of dying children. Even though it's gathered a nostalgic following, we should still ask, does the film really hold up years later? Whether it does or doesn't, we're not going to get any movies about heroic cat sleds, are we? Hey, I resent that! <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. There's talking animals in this? Sure, why not? I thought you said this was a true story. Based. Based. Did you just hallucinate that there were talking animals? It's possible. I just added nicotine patches to my daily smoking, so I'm feeling a little queasy. I'm gonna lay down. But what about the story? Okay. Are you gonna shut up, or are you gonna keep being Little Miss YouTube comments? Okay, I'm sorry. That's better. <laughs> That's a good high. Anyways, the critic started his review. <laughs> Let's take a look at Balto. So this animated story about a dog racing across Alaska opens with live action people in the middle of New York. You sure we didn't put on Professor Sprout Visits the Muggleverse? old woman and her grandchild are looking for a memorial site, and she decides to force the kid to sit on a bench for an hour and a half while she tells the story. In the cold winter of 1925, it was snowing hard. Things were animated back then, I dare even say, with a Spielberg vibe. We see Alaska's portrayal of Ben Fur. <laughs> as we're introduced to our half-wolf, half-dog hybrid, Balto, played by Kevin Bacon. He's also joined by a goose played by, I think, Bob Hoskins' drunken rants from the Super Mario Brothers movie. When will you learn to stay on the sidelines? Aw, it's his best Russian accent since Enemy at the Gate. Stalingrad. They're watching a sled race led by a dog named Steel, who is so mean that literally every frame is determined to convince you he's pure evil. Get out of here, wolf dog. You better get back to your pack. Well, maybe your taste runs more toward wolf. Jenna, join me for dinner. I've never seen a bad guy where every second he's moving in some sort of obviously diabolical manner. You were the fastest. What? Oh. Most villains have some normal everyday movements, but 24-7, this guy is like, Would you like some ice cream? You can trust me. I'm oozing with pleasantness. Every angle is evil, except for maybe this one that, that looks like a girl's t-shirt from an anime con. But look at this. Even when he's turning around, he looks evil. I'm sorry, Balto. Balto the half -breed. Oh, 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 oh. oh, you want me to turn around? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want me to do it again? Everybody mocks Balto for being a hybrid, the humans are afraid of him, and the dogs think he's an outcast, leading to probably the film's most poignant line. Not a dog, not a wolf. All he knows is what he is not. Wow, that was actually pretty heavy. How are you gonna follow something as complex as that up? <laughs> Beep. 
So that just happened. Oh, there's also Bob Hoskins doing the goose step. Hey! Hey! So at this point, you're probably wondering, where does the comedy in this kid's film lie, particularly with the goose? Is this Lego Batman good, or are we in nutjob territory? Well, let's look at the chart. Yes. Yes. Damn it, just annoying enough! They've entered the Sinbad zone! Oh, there's also these. I think polar bears, though they look more like moogles if they ate Jim Poe. And to possibly make things worse, they're voiced by Phil Collins. We love you, Uncle Boris. Oh, Christ! Not a musical. Oh, you are a kind movie. So while having fun at beautiful o'clock and presumably striking a trailer pose, let me see oh, here. God. Yep, that's some compressed enchantment. Bad news seems to be rolling in. Movie lagging. Need story. Send disease, preferably child killing. There you go. A horrible epidemic seems to be sweeping the town as Rosie, the woman telling the story shown here as a kid, is being comforted by her dog Jenna, played by Bridget Fonda. <coughs> Rosie, come on, you're gonna catch your death out here. Come and catch it inside. It's a stronger visual for younger viewers. Hi. Hi. Rosie's in there. In the hospital, why? Balto, of course, has the hots for Jenna, but she's too distracted by what'll happen to Rosie. I know how to find out. Come on. Based on a true story. If your dog can't do that, he's stupid. Looks like diphtheria. And I'm out of antitoxin. Jenna. Jenna, I'm sorry. You know I'm voiced by Kevin Bacon, right? And I like eating bacon. So that's like two degrees of me. Thus a dog sled race will be done to determine which dogs will go out to get the medicine. Which you'd think they figure out from the races they just had. Time's a factor here, guys. Of course, though, Balto enters himself in. Do you honestly think any musher would ever put you on his team? You're even more mixed up than I thought. Ha! Joke's on you. Years from now, they're gonna name a Shaquille O'Neal movie after you! As long as the medicine gets through, stop being such a glory hound. You're 100% right, Jen. I... I... I wasn't thinking about those children. Good lord, it's like his face has ten different personalities and they all eat children. I'm gonna fold you five ways and leave you for a cat toy. Then you'll be a part of awkward punchlines like this. Shame. So while Indiana Jones starts his winter vacation, the dog sled, led by Steel, travels through the snow to get the medicine. This is the polar not going anywhere. Please hand over your one-way ticket to Dithyria. Maybe we should go back. We're lost. I am not lost. Yeah, you know, dogs really are the worst with directions. It's like when I let my dog drive. All right, just back out nice and smooth. Wait a minute. He let a dog drive? I guess. This true story of yours doesn't seem to make very much sense. Why would anybody let a dog drive? Shouldn't it be the human who's doing the driving? Look, I'm telling this story to a kid. Of course I'm gonna take some creative liberties, because I think you're dumb. Well, how much of your story is actually true? The critic continues his review oh talking about when one of the dogs gets the bad news. It's terrible, my friends. Just terrible. I speak bark, which I... Thought we were all speaking, but apparently not. It looks like the sled is missing in the storm. Well, okay, I'm sure a slight delay won't be a major issue. Oh God! Shit's getting real, man! I'm just assuming the other coffins are for Tiny Tim, Little Match Girl, and Full Metal Alchemist, spoiler! Don't act like that can't happen! There's dogs in this world. Sugar fried Jesus, what do you follow a scene like that up with? When you are big frozen stiff statue named Balto! Oh yes! The comedy stylings of characters you much rather eat than listen to. This seems totally appropriate now. I'm beginning to understand the bell! <laughs> oh, what a shame this isn't a musical. Could you see Phil Collins obnoxiously explaining in song what doesn't need to be explained? Them coffins there, me some kids gonna die. Bill Collins says, this is where you cry. Some big emotions about love inspiration stuff and where's my paycheck? I gotta fly. I smell boyfriend material. Balto. Jenna figures out Balto's going to find the sled and deliver the medicine. He marks his trail by scratching the trees because of 
dog, and wolf sense of smell would just get him lost. As we see, Steel's gang is in big trouble. I call it, let's eat him. Come on, you act like you never ate human flesh before. But our heroes come across the biggest threat in animated movies, a bear. <laughs> no! Don't you know they ruin animated films now? Open season, Brother Bear, Brave, Norm of the North, their destruction knows no rewrites. Speaking of which, even as black bears go, that is a pretty damn black bear. Did he bathe in ink after swimming through oil from a lake in Sin City? He's so black his blood is coffee! But Jenna saves the day as they lead the bear into the ice. That's right, return to your home planet, whatever species you were supposed to be! <laughs> there you go, go save them polar bears rather than fight the other bear that you should technically be bigger than. Is this like when Pluto's on a leash but Goofy can walk around, we just don't question it? But Jenna damages her leg, so the comic air quote relief take her back while Balto moves forward, eventually meeting up with the sled. I'll get us back. I'm the lead dog. I'm in charge. Two bones says Steel takes him. <laughs> You're on. Gambling dogs, this must be Michael Vick's favorite scene. Phew, I had to blow the dust off that one. <sighs> but Steel wants the glory, so he fights Balto despite him not fighting back. Thank God kids films favor pacifism because Steel falls off a cliff mid-ass beating. Dead, 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 dead. Oh, I mean totally alive. But even with Balto leading the way, Steel still manages to stop the medicine from getting to dying kids. Go ahead, wolf dog. You'll never get home. How about over here? Move the wrong way. Yeah. Holy shit, what is wrong with this character? This is a village of kids that are going to die. Bad dog! Bad dog! I'm also gonna create three new cancers as soon as I get home! So Balto as well loses his way, but is determined to move forward. Right off a cliff. Well, it's all okay now. I'll focus in. Well, it's all okay now. On the floor! was nicer to its main character, both the movie and the concept. Meanwhile, back at the village, the others tried to figure out why Balto went looking for them. He's tracking them. Tracking a championship team in a blizzard? <laughs> <laughs> Kids are dying still. You gotta laugh, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> He tells him a false story about how Balto tried to sabotage the mission, ending up with the other dogs getting killed. I, I, I went on, dragging the medicine alone, all alone. Balto, he, he demanded I let him take the medicine, but he couldn't handle it. He made me promise to take care of you, Jenna. Wow, this guy is such an obvious yet evil liar, he should probably get a job at the White House. The other dogs died and I was the only one left. Period. Also, the race I was a part of had the largest audience to ever witness a dog sled race. Period. But sir, we have eyes. Your eyes are wrong. It's an alternative bark. But Melissa... Stop calling me that! But Jenna doesn't believe him and knows that Balto is still out there trying to get the medicine for poor Rosie. Hey, do you have any nicotine patches? No, and what the hell are you doing here? Well, I've been coughing up a lung on your couch. I figured if I was lightheaded, I wouldn't mind so much. Why are you sleeping on my couch? It's a nice couch. Get out of here! Okay. Dude! That's your only contribution to the story? Just laying in bed and coughing? Maybe. Well, how did you know that any of this was going on then? You weren't there, you didn't see it, and the majority of it sounds unimpressively made up. Look, kid, what am I supposed to say here? And then I looked at the ceiling longer. And then I coughed 87 more times. I've got to embellish. Is it any? Is this story true? Come on, is it so hard to believe that I was lost, passed out, and annoying people? I guess that's a good point. Speaking of which, go get me some gin from the fridge. I'm gonna see how many shots it takes to forget your name. Hey! 
Hey guys, you want to meet me, the Channel Awesome team, and see the premiere of one of our reviews on the big screen? Well, you can! On May 3rd at Hollywood Boulevard Theater in Woodridge, Illinois, we'll be premiering our clipless review of Suicide Squad. This is one of the best movie theaters you'll ever go to. It has memorabilia, themed theaters, food, alcohol, relaxing chairs, and of course, us! We'll be signing autographs in the lobby at 7 p.m. and start the show at 9, and we'll even do a Q&A right after. Tickets are $20 and you can get them at the link below at theawesomestore.com. Show does require the purchase of a food or drink, and we will verify purchase tickets at the event and hand out your printed tickets there. Guys, we've never done this before, so we have no idea how fast tickets are gonna go, so best get them as early as you can. Come say hi, enjoy the show, and hopefully we'll see you there. Zabalto is separated from his team and still has the medicine, but comes across... Kimba the White Wolf? Well, that's all I got. I want a Rue, man. To us, that's like brain surgery. So, apparently that gives him superpowers to drag the medicine up a cliff. Grandma explained that. And then the god of the wolves came, or something. Wait, what? And then they howled at this guy, making Balto physically stronger, I guess. I'm not following any of this. And even though that wolf could have helped pull the sled or give directions, he just kind of disappeared and was never seen again. Grandma, are you off your meds? They make me catch the gay. So the team is back on track as Balto uses his nose to find the way. Why didn't he just use that before? Is that like a weird prejudice too? Dogs don't sniff to find stuff? How dare you use your nose! Don't you know what disgusting animal you're sounding like? Toucan Sam. But because this film loves to punish all signs of hope, it tries to toss them off a bridge. Followed by an avalanche. Oh, come on! The moral of the story is nature sucks, kids! Don't play in the snow, it'll someday fight back! Hey, you know what's missing in this scene? A Phil Collins song. I'm scared of snow, you should be afraid too. I'll tell you how to feel all the way through. They get trapped inside a cave where the movie reminds us that Spielberg produced this film. Ah. Uh... I'll be right in my legal authority to satirize this property. But if that two seconds of levity was overbearing, don't worry, because giant killer icicles are after them now! Just give us a fucking chance, you son of a bitch! Oh look! The medicine crate has a crack in it too! Fuck you! They should call this movie shit, 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 shit! They do eventually make it out, though, as Jenna reflects some bottles that apparently light up the entire town. Which Balto would have plainly seen anyway, so it was kind of pointless. Balto's back! Oh, and a meteor hits him! I'm so sorry, kids. Life just didn't like this dog. Nature's kind of like God's hitman. But news reaches Steel about Balto's return, which pisses off the rest. Okay, okay. I can explain. You guys weren't there, so you don't... Wait a minute, guys. Wait just a second. Oh, come on! I was trying to do a reverse Gorilla DeVille. You know, an evil dog that wants to kill a bunch of little kids? I will be on someone's best villains list! The medicine is received, Balto gives a hat made from his brethren, and Jenna gives him the equivalent of dog frenching. Well, this is such a joyous occasion. Let's give Balto absolutely no lines whatsoever. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. He doesn't speak in the last 25 minutes of this movie. They cut his dialogue aside from an occasional word like oof or ah. The other dogs get a lot of lines, but for whatever reason, Balto is almost completely silent. Then again, that might be for the best. With everything they threw at him, his dialogue probably wouldn't be very kid-friendly. Ah, oh, shit. God damn it. Seriously, did I run over a leprechaun? What is with the bullshit bad luck? This is it, Grandma. Blaze found it. So Rosie's story seems to be over as they find the monument dedicated to the dogs that made that journey. 
in the winter of 1925. <laughs> Walter really did do all of that, didn't he, Grandma? Oh, yes, sweetheart, he really did. I shouldn't. I really shouldn't. Come on. Let the kids have their true story. <laughs> Balto facts. You're not gonna like it. You're really not gonna like it. <clears throat> Balto did not run the longest nor most hazardous part of the journey. The most dangerous and longest run was led by a dog named Hogo, driven by a musher named Seppala. In fact, there were 20 mushers of varying dogs used to make the journey. Balto just happened to be the last one, so he got the majority of the credit. While Seppala and Hogo did the hardest work, it was Balto that got all the fame, even from President Calvin Coolidge. In fact, there was such a hatred for Balto getting all the credit that him and his owner weren't even welcome to the award ceremony in New York for Seppala and Togo. This was all bullshit, wasn't it? Well, there was an incredible review done entirely by the Nostalgia Critic. Ah, there it is. <gasps> About time I filmed the sucker. Wait a minute, the Nostalgia Critic is still alive and he hasn't even filmed the review yet? Well, no. Random kid, I was just about to, but I had to get the script from my brother. You see, I was sick, so he wrote the majority of it this week. Oh my god. So we're not even in the future, are we? You're a special kid, aren't you? But what about the text that says we are? Oh, that's just my satanic arts. You lied! You lied about practically everything! Okay, look. Maybe everything didn't happen like I said, maybe credit was given to the wrong person, and maybe like 98% of what you heard was false. But, did you have fun? I guess. Was it corny but beautiful at times? I suppose. And did you know anything at all about these dog saving kids before I told you? Not really. Well then, for pulling most of this out of my ass, I'd say we had a pretty entertaining time. Well, I never thought of it like that. Hey, Critic, what did you think of Balto, by the way? Basically that. Oh, wow. Maybe there's more truth to fiction than I thought. Actually, there isn't. That was just a huge coincidence. Speaking of which, why did you bring her here to begin with? Oh, I just wanted to leave her here so I didn't have to tell her that both parents died from double erotic asphyxiation. Well, that backfired. She's all yours, Critic. What kept you? A child's mind is very delicate. Floor it! <laughs> Don't worry. I know a certain long-faced, balding, big-toothed comedian who would love to take care of you. Oh. She's all yours, Chester. Oh my god, I'm a mother! Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and this week we are doing the One Acre Fund. This organization empowers chronically hungry farm families in East Africa to lift themselves out of hunger and poverty. They supply smallholder farms with the financing and training they need to grow their way out. They invest in farmers to generate a permanent gain in farm income. That means they provide a complete service bundle of seeds and fertilizer, financing, training, and deliver these services within walking distance of the 400,000 rural farmers they serve. They measure success in their ability to make farmers more prosperous and they always put the farmers first. 
If you go to their YouTube page, you can see all the various people they've helped in the past. And if you go to their site, you can see how you can help them in their mission. Click on the link and see how you can grow something truly special.